Welcome back. Now, we've just been discussing the lunacy of wokery when it goes too far. And I would suggest the uh, wokery is lunatic even if it doesn't go too far, but sometimes it gets ridiculous, as in the case of uh, the Secret Service agents who were told by their boss not to get onto the roof from where uh, Donald Trump was shot uh, for health and safety reasons because it was too slopey. It's not even very slopey, by the way. Uh, so this lunacy, plus uh, this person, uh, Kimberly Cheetle, uh, the only thing she's obsessed with is getting 30% of her agents to be women. Uh, that's what she's obsessed with, DEI, Diversity, Equality and Inclusivity. Uh, and uh, now she's got a force full of short uh, women who can't do the job properly. Uh, but at least they're diverse and inclusive and equal. It's just, you know... It's insane. So now, uh, you know, it's, uh, of course, ridiculous to say, well, that's America's problem. No, it's not. It's our problem, too. We are just as bad. And here comes a case to prove it. Uh, well, let's uh, go straight over to uh, talk to a man who I think might be on my side on this one. He's a former Met Police Chief Detective, of course, our favourite guest in the world, Peter Blexley. Hello, Peter. Good evening. Uh, now, let's talk about exactly what's going up north uh, of the border uh, up in Scotland. Uh, it, now, Police Scotland is very cash-strapped. Uh, it is struggling to fight crime amid dire financial straits. So much so uh, that it has a terrible staffing crisis because they can't employ, uh, afford to employ enough people. And they've had to cut back on crime-fighting, literally... Uh, so, uh, investigate fewer crimes because they haven't got the money to do it. Uh, now, guess what they are spending money on? Officers, uh, Scottish coppers, are going to be paid to join gay pride marches. Uh, your thoughts? <laughs> and if they are not paid, they can claim a day off back in loo. Every police officer that joins the police service the length and breadth of this once great nation takes a solemn oath to police without fear or favour. That includes Chief Constable Jo Farrell and her senior management team. They all took that solemn oath. By allowing officers to attend these pride marches and be paid for them or have their day off in lieu, is the clearest possible example of showing favour to a particular section of community, a particular group. So the Chief Constable and her underlings who have pushed this policy have undoubtedly broken that solemn oath and should be disciplined accordingly. Now, uh, Assistant Chief Constable Tim Mayers uh, sent a memo uh, to all the div divisional commanders up there in Scotland, and it said this, uh, to explain this policy, paying coppers to join LGBT events, uh, gay pride marches. It says, uh, his uh, memo said, it is recognised that pride is a community engagement opportunity, therefore participation is considered a duty day. Uh, listen, uh, Peter, uh, you know, OK, community relations with coppers and the community, I suppose it's something to be considered. But uh, most people, most citizens like me, I don't give a damn about community relations between the police force and the community. What I care about or what I would like is uh, police forces that go about uh, investigating crimes and catching the bad guys. Uh, how about that? Protecting a gay pride march, of course, is police work so that the event passes off peacefully without injury or harm to anyone. That is absolutely understandable. However, it is a country mile away from participating in this march. That is not a tour of duty. It is marching with a particular group of people. It is showing favour. It is such an egregious and grotesque breach of those senior officers' solemn oath that they should be utterly ashamed of themselves. And this from a police service that has admitted it will no longer investigate 
tens of thousands of crimes which they insultingly call lower level and leave behind victims. Yeah, we're looking at, Peter, lots and lots of images while we speak of these police cars all painted in rainbow colours. That cost taxpayers money. Uh, then there was down in the West Country, wasn't there, the, the police force where, for some reason, all the male coppers spent the day wearing high heels and so on and so forth. Uh, why do police forces... I mean, you know, I, I'm all for gay rights, uh, gay pride marches, absolutely, why not? Uh, or, you know, good, good. But uh, why are the police so obsessed with just one woke cause just just get the gay community lgbtq community you never see them like investing too much time in other causes what what is this about and believe it or not one police service spent hard-earned taxpayers money on rainbow colored tins of lip balm <laughs> i wish i wish i wasn't telling the truth i truly do what senior police throughout the country fail to understand is that people from every community become, unfortunately, victims of crime, even more so in this day and age. Everybody, every faith, colour, creed, sexuality, rural, urban, city, every area and every type of person is affected by crime, which creates victims. If the police could actually grasp that old-fashioned concept of investigating crime and arresting perpetrators. Through doing that, <laughs> they would engage with every single community and there would be no need for this blatant showing of favour towards one group or another. Yeah, exactly right. And I think this probably comes down... It's the chief constables, isn't it? It's the senior officers, all those ones who've probably never walked the beat in their life, probably never arrested anybody, but they did go to Oxford University and all that. Uh, they are the ones who are obsessed with all this nonsense at the expense of crime detection. Uh, what is going on here? Why can't they recalibrate their thoughts and perhaps get police forces to do what we want them to do? As you quite rightly say, Peter, if, you, if police forces want good community relations, solve crimes, catch the bad guys. When I ring up and say, my car's been stolen, how about, you know, not just shrugging your shoulders and saying, what do you expect us to do? I expect you to catch the people who stole it. How about that? That would really improve community relations wouldn't it what goes on in these chief constables minds it most certainly would and would be a much better response than insultingly issuing you only with a crime reference number in the last 20 to 30 years the higher echelons of policing have been populated and i would suggest polluted by highly educated as you say oxbridge types with their masters and their doctorates and their MBAs and all manner of qualifications, which quite frankly have very little practical relevance to policing. I had the great honour of spending three days on the front line of policing last week with Bedfordshire Police. And in the, amongst those front line cops, I saw everything that I believe the public would want. Courage, humility, compassion for people in their moment of need, professionalism. I saw all of that. There is clearly a wealth of policing talent in this country, which is being led by fools who are so indoctrinated with their wokery, their fluffiness and their lib liberal kind of nonsense that have turned policing into this community service of unrecognisable almost from the crime fighting force of yesteryear. That's what the public want. I firmly believe the moderate mainstream who policing have turned their backs on when they've been burgled, had their car stolen, their phone nicked, their bicycle stolen, or their elderly relative has become a victim of fraud, all had their backs turned on them by the police. Consequently, trust and confidence is tanking. There could be a revolution. Policing could be turned round fairly effectively and in a pretty short order if only the woke top brass had any idea how to do policing and if other public services would help by doing their jobs properly.
Absolutely. Peter, now you mentioned uh, going on the front line with Bedfordshire Police. That's for your new programme. Tell us all about it. Yes, it is. In, uh, I hope, uh, a couple of weeks' time, there will be another episode of Peter Blexley Uncovers. And this, of course, will be I Uncover Frontline Policing. There is some wonderful examples of policing seen there. But I also put forward, based on the evidence of three long days in their company, of what needs to be done and how it should be done. Policing, senior policing, is a vast echo chamber where people only tell these police chiefs what they want to hear rather than what they need to hear. Yeah, absolutely, Peter. Well, I look forward to the show because uh, you certainly know what you're talking about. Always a pleasure, mate. Thank you very much for your time. Peter Blexley, Flormer, Met Police Detective there.